Welcome to this first episode of Let's Code a Linux Network Driver. So in today's video we will start developing a network driver for my SPI Ethernet networking card. And if you follow along, um, you have basically two options. So one thing is the hopper you can see here is open source, so you can find the schematic and the design files in a GitHub repository of mine, which is basically here. So we have two PCBs here. One is this um, Mac card and one is a Phi transceiver card. But of course, if you want to manufacture these PCBs by your own, it will yeah maybe take some money and effort. And if you want to have a more cheaper alternative to follow along, what you can also do is you can get a WISNET SIR 5 evaluation board. So this board here, you will get one of these for around five euros. So it's not really expensive. But one thing you need is, because on both boards we have the W7500 microcontroller on which we have to run some firmware to act as our SPI Ethernet networking card. And in order to flash the firmware on both systems you need an ST-Link um, programmer to do so. But yeah, these are also not very expensive. Okay, so if you want to get the firmware which is running on the W7500, you can take a look at this repository here, which I will also link in the description down below. So here you can find the firmware which is needed to turn W7500 into a simple SBI Ethernet device. Yes. Okay, so the next thing we need to know is we need to know how the two boards connect to a Raspberry Pi because we will develop the driver on a Raspberry Pi. And here I will explain it in this video for my own PCB, but I will also provide you some instructions how to connect SIR5 to a Raspberry Pi to use it also as our simple SPI Ethernet device. And if you want to know how the board connects to a Raspberry Pi, well, here is our Mac card again. This connector here goes to the Ethernet transceiver. This connector here is used for getting a UART and getting the pins you need for the ST-Link. But this connector here is the most important one because this connects to the Raspberry Pi. So let's take a look at the pin out of this connector. Here it is. So basically we're using an SPI interface and we also have one interrupt pin from the W7500 to the Raspberry Pi. And this connector connects to SPI zero interface of the Raspberry Pi to so to these pins. And we are using chip select zero, so this pin here as our chip select pin. And the interrupt pin is GPIO pin number 25. Okay, with this information we can now start writing a device tree overlay for our simple SPI Ethernet device. Because on a Raspberry Pi, in order to add a device to the SPI bus, we need an, Ether, we need an um, device tree overlay. Okay, so here in this set folder, so set stands for simple SPI Ethernet device driver in this folder here or also in this repository here, I will upload my um, code which I'm developing in this series of videos. And if you take a look what's in here, so I've already created some files to save us a little bit of time. You can see we have a device tree overlay file or a device tree source file which will compile into a device tree overlay. We have a C file as the source for our driver and we have a make file to build the driver and also the device tree overlay. So maybe let's start taking a look at the make file. So yeah, this is basically a standard make file for building a Linux kernel module by using the Linux kernel headers. So we are just calling the make file from the Linux kernel headers and we're telling it, please look in our current path for modules to build. The only difference is I've added a new target here, this a target which will compile us our device tree binary overlay DTPO file. So as an input, it takes the device tree source file and it compiles it to a device tree overlay file. Okay, then let's take a look at the device tree overlay file. 
So yeah, this is basically a simple device tree overlay, adding three fragments to the device tree. The first fragment is here to disable SPI device zero. So normally if you're starting a Raspberry Pi and you have SPI enabled, you have two device files to access the SPI bus. So what you have normally is SPI dev 00 and SPI dev 01. Over this one you can access SPI bus 0 with chip select 0. With this one you can access SPI bus 0 with chip select 1. And I've connected my simple SPI Ethernet device to this one here. So I have re to remove this node or this device file so my driver can use this SPI interface to access our device. And the way we are doing this is, yeah, we are just setting the status of SPI dev0 to disabled and then the SPI is free for our own device. In fragment 1 we are adding a device to the SPI bus 0 and the device name is set for a simple SPI Ethernet device. Here you can see the compatible string, the maximum SPI frequency. We are using 8 bits per SPI transfer with status OK, we are enabling the device. And here we are setting up a GPIO pin for an interrupt and we are using GPIO pin 25. And this too here means as a trigger for the interrupt is a falling edge of this pin here. And as we are using a pin, we also have to configure this pin for, as an input. And down here is how we can do this. Yep. So here we have an overlay for configuring the GPIO pin as an input. So we want to configure GPIO pin 25, the function is zero, and we don't want to use an internal pull up resistor. Okay, so much for the device tree overlay. And now we can take a look at the template we need for an SPI driver. And then maybe let's also check if our simple SPI Ethernet device is alive in the probe function. Okay, therefore let me open up the um, source file for my driver. Here we go. So you can see this is a very simple template for an SPI driver probe from the device tree. We have a probe and a remove function. Probe is called when a device is added to the system. Remove is called when the device is removed from the system. Here we are naming the compatible devices and this driver is only available or only um, compatible with devices with the compatible string bright light set. So normally this compatible string, the first word is the vendor, the second word is the device name and you have a comma to separate it. And you can see here the compatible string is the same, like in the device tree overlay. So over this string Linux knows, okay, for the set device I have to use the set driver. Okay, what else do we have here? Here we are declaring our SPI driver struct, so we are giving it a name, we are telling it with which device it's compatible and we are providing pointers to a probe and a remove function. And down here we are adding some metadata to um, tell or to give some information about this driver. Okay, and what I want to do now is, you can see here the source code for the firmware running on the W7500 microcontroller. And basically what this device does is it, it waits for a command to be sent from the Raspberry Pi over SPI. Here you can see a list of the available commands. And you can see here we have a check alive command available, over which we can check if a correct device is connected over SPI. Here we are in the main function, and in the main function, after doing a lot of initializations, what we are doing is we are entering an endless loop here, and in this endless loop we are just waiting to receive a new command from the SPI bus. And if we have received such a command, we are doing different or we are reacting to it depending on the command. And if we search for check alive here, you can see here is the code for the check alive command, which is quite simple. Um, basically all we're doing here is if check alive, so 10 was sent to the device, we are 
writing back to the Raspberry Pi the value 73 hexadecimal. And that's all we are doing basically. Okay, so let's implement this in the probe function here to check if our device is alive. First thing I will do is I will declare two um, variables. And the second variable data um, I will set to 10, which is the command for check alive. Okay, then I can start accessing the SBI bus. Therefore, I will use the function SBI write to write something out to the SBI bus. And the SBI device to which I want to write is passed as an argument to my probe function here. The second argument is appointed to the data I want to write, which is this data variable here. And the last argument is the amount of data I want to write, which is one. And in case everything worked fine, um, SPI write will return a zero, otherwise an error code. And in case an error occurred, I will use def error function, the def error function to print out the error. So SPI def is the device for which this error occurred. And then I will print out SPI write failed. And I will return the negative error code. Okay, and reading something back from the SPI bus is also very similar, but now I have to use the SPI read function instead. And here the, the error message is SPI read fail, failed. But what I will do here is with few delay, I will add a small delay of 25 microseconds um, between the write and the read because the microcontroller needs some time to react to it. Okay, and at the end I will use def info to print out what we have received. So data is, and normally we should get back um, 73 hexadecimal here if everything worked fine. And down here in the remove function, I will just print out set removed or remove. Okay, good. So now let me try to compile the driver and the device tree overlay here. And let's see if I made a mistake. No, it's looking good. Then I can fire up tmux so I can have a second window here in which I will follow the Linux kernel's lock. And here I will first apply the device tree overlay. On a Raspberry Pi, I can do this with the dt overlay command. Okay, so now you can see the um, device tree overlay was applied. And if I take a look at SBI devices, in my dev folder, you can only see I have one device available here. And now if I insert my kernel module, my driver, yes, it's loaded and you can see here, check alive actually return the 73 hexadecimal so the device is um, yeah, detected correctly and the access over the SPI bus is also working. Cool, so that's how to implement a small, the template for our SPI networking card. In the next video we will talk about how we can use um, the interrupt pin. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So thanks for watching and goodbye.